What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 2024 BMW 530i xDrive. Huge thank you to Julius Green over at BMW of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular 530i or any BMW product, I'll be sure to have Julius' information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first, I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 BMW 530i xDrive, and this particular one has been painted in the optional $650 black sapphire metallic exterior paint. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, the 5 Series as a whole was redesigned inside and out, and you do get some new powertrain options as well for the 2024 model year. But before I continue on in today's video, I'm curious to hear what your opinions are right off the bat, stylistically speaking, of the new 5 Series. So let me know in the comments down below. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the headlights, then I'm going to work my way down and around into the back end. So starting with the headlights, this 530 has been optioned with the $2,550 premium package which gives you LED headlights with cornering. You get automatic high beams as standard, as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. But now taking a step back and to the left, this is what the front end of the new 5 Series looks like. So you may be able to tell you do have your BMW logo located at the center of your hood. And then coming down just a little bit, you get the gloss black kidney grill with the satin aluminum accents. You also do get that satin aluminum grill surround. If you wanted the grill surround to be a darker color, you might want to look into getting the shadow line package which gives you some more dark colors here on the exterior but again this vehicle has been optioned with the premium package which gives you this forward facing camera and that forward facing camera works with your 360 degree view camera system i also wanted to mention as standard with the 530 you get six forward facing sensors and then again this vehicle again not again but this vehicle has also been optioned with the three thousand dollar m sport package which gives you the m sport specific front bumper makes it look a lot sportier than the standard uh, front bumper that you get with the 530. It just makes it look more aggressive here at the front end. And then with the M Sport package, if you got this in white, this piece right here will always be gloss black, as will your outer grills as well. So I'm gonna point that out. This entire area right here will be gloss black, even if you got the exterior paint color in white. Same with the center grill, and then same with the outer grill on this side as well. But coming on down the side, you get a reflector right there. And again, like I mentioned, this vehicle has been optioned with the M Sport package, which gives you the M Sport suspension. And then also with the M Sport package, you get these 19 inch M double spoke bi-color black wheels that are wrapped in 245-45 Continental Pro Contact GX all season tires. And then also you do get those uh, blue M calipers. So I wanna show you what the tread pattern on these tires here looks like real quick. And then here's a view of the M wheels. You can see you get the M on the wheels themselves. And then moving on from there as standard with the 530, you do get rain sensing wipers as well as body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. Also as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, the driver side mirror is auto dimming, and then you also do get your blind spot monitoring on the outsides of both of your side view mirrors. But again, this vehicle has been optioned with the premium package, and with the premium package, you get this side view camera on both side view mirrors. Again, those cameras work with your 360 degree view camera system that you do get with the premium package. Now, here's a little side profile shot of what the new 5 Series looks like. So again, this vehicle has been optioned with the M Sport package, which gives you the gloss black window trim, where otherwise it would be the satin aluminum window trim if you did not get the M Sport package. And then coming down just a little bit more, you do get body color door handles with keyless access and illumination. So you can actually see right now that there are lights that help you find your door handles. And then down here, there's also a little light, and that's basically like your puddle light. So it helps you, you know, see what you're stepping into or stepping out of when you're stepping out of the vehicle if there's a big puddle. And then all the way at the bottom of your passenger doors, you get the body color rocker panel. But coming on down the side, here is a rear three quarter shot of what this thing looks like. This kind of gives me Jaguar XF vibes here at the back. Let me know if you see that as well. But up top here, you get a body color shark fin antenna. 
then you do get a rear window defroster. Your third brake light is located about right there. And then you also do get this little five right here, letting you know that this is a five series. And then coming around back, obviously this being the five series, you do get the LED taillights as standard. And then you get that X drive badge right there. That X drive badge will cost you 2,300 bucks. And then you obviously do get a backup camera just beneath your BMW logo. Again, that's about right there. And then you get the Chrome 530 badging. As standard with the 530, you get a power tailgate. So you just put your hand underneath here and the tailgate will open up. It will also power close as well, which is a very nice feature. One thing that's kind of interesting to me back here. So you can see this isn't like flush. And the reason being is that underneath this, you have a spare tire. But if you keep on digging, you also have your jack over there. But if you keep digging and you lift this up just a little bit more, your battery is underneath here. So I think BMW could have done a better job with this layout here in the trunk rather than this. This is a little bit you know, sloppy in my opinion. Uh, but nonetheless, you get a decent amount of storage space in here. But this, uh, this is kind of interesting to me. Then you get storage cubby there. And you also get a storage cubby over here, which is actually very, very deep. And you can set jumper cables, maybe some uh, gloves or something like that if it's winter time. So very good amount of storage space down in there. You also get quite a bit of storage space uh, down in here as well. Just quite, not quite as much as you get on the driver's side. And then also, you get this handle here. You get another handle here and basically this is to drop your second row seats so if you need a little bit more storage space you can pull on that and the second row seats will drop but obviously you have that lock button right there that will lock the vehicle and then just to the left of that if you press on that the power tailgate will begin to close it is definitely nice to see a power tailgate uh, on this 5 series and then coming down just a little bit more again this one's been optioned with the m sport package which gives you the m sport rear bumper you may be able to tell i'm not sure how well the gopro is going to pick it up but the bumper back here is a lot sportier than it would otherwise be without the m sport package but one thing that's kind of interesting is that these may look like exhaust tips but the exhaust actually comes down here so it's not actually like a fancy tip even though it kind of looks like a fancy tip. Anyways, I thought I may point that out because I found that kind of interesting. Now here at the rear end, you also get another six parking sensors. You get two reflectors on the outsides of the bumper. And then that is your reverse light. Here's a little booty shot. And then coming on down the side, this thing does ask for 91 octane. So if you press on that, that will reveal your filler neck. And then again, you do see it says 91, but it also says 89 minimum, but yeah. That's about it for the exterior of the new 5 Series. I'm actually genuinely curious to hear what your opinions are of the new 5 Series. Are you a fan of it? Are you not a fan of it? Let me know in the comment section down below. In the headlights, I kind of see the BMW X1 style. And that is because this style is what they are going to be putting on new BMWs. However, I will say this front end looks miles and miles and miles better than the, uh, excuse me, the 7 Series. I think the 7 Series they did a terrible job with. This looks pretty decent. But let me know your opinions in the comments down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that two liter twin power turbo four cylinder that works with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Total output is 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 5.8 seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 35 miles per gallon on the highway for 30 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. Again, if you wanted all wheel drive, that is going to cost you an additional 2,300 dollars over rear wheel drive because the standard 530 is rear wheel drive an additional 2300 bucks gets you all wheel drive and then if you just get the 540 the 540 only comes in all wheel drive but if you're enjoying the video so far today please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button like i said i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal without your support i really do put a lot of time and effort into making these videos so if you would just take a second if you're enjoying the video if you've learned anything from this video just give the video a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button the likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the youtube algorithm and that is what helps me grow so anyways i'd appreciate it if you do those three things but with that stuff out of the way let's move into the interior
Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. However, there is a setting to when you walk up to the vehicle, it will unlock. And when you walk away from it, it will lock back up. And that is what the setting is on right now. So you can see it locked right back up. But when I get back closer to it, it is going to unlock again. And that is just a setting you can turn on or off on the infotainment system. But this one also does have remote start. So if you wanted to remote start the vehicle, you press this button three times and hold on the third. One, two, three, and hold. And she fires right up. But let's take a look at what the interior of the new 5 Series has to offer. So first things first, the interior color on this is the burgundy red Viganza synthetic leather upholstery. So this is what these seats look like. The synthetic leather actually feels like real leather in my personal opinion. And then up top here at the top of the door panel, you get some vinyl wrapping. This does come standard with a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So this is what the fancy speaker looks like. You get two memory seat adjustment settings. This is going to pop up your seat settings on the infotainment system. Then you have your unlock and your lock functions, some ambient lighting. Uh, and then coming down here, that is going to power fold in your side view mirrors. You have your side view mirror controls, automatic up and down windows at all four corners. This button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. Then you get some more of that burgundy Viganza right here. Uh, it's nicely padded and you get some accent colored stitching. You get some ambient lighting down in there. Uh, and then right here, this is to pop open your trunk. Then you get some miscellaneous storage space at the bottom of the door panel. And that kind of about does it for the door panel on the 5 Series. This is what your front seats look like. Obviously you do get power front seats. You also do get thigh extensions on both of your front seats and you get four way power lumbar. And here are your seat controls for the front uh, driver and the passenger actually, because they look the exact same. You get the manual thigh extension here. So if you come underneath the seat, you pull on that, you can see the thigh extension will extend and then you can just push it right back in. But uh, I'm not strong enough to do that with just one hand. Actually I am, but uh, I was just at an awkward angle. But Anyways, stepping on into the interior of the new 5 Series, all I gotta do is close that door. It tells me what to do, push my foot on the brake, and then push to start here. And now I have access into everything here on the interior. So basically, I'm just gonna lock it, and I'm gonna walk you throughout the interior control. So coming down over to here, um, this is kind of interesting. So you can have your fan speed on five, but basically you see where it says zero, this is how you turn your venting off. So right now that's zero, then you can go to like 50% vent open, or you can open the vent all the way up if you have it set to one, but uh, zero is basically closing the vent. And then you see this button right here, that is going to pop up your exterior lighting options. And then this is basically uh, headlights on, this is headlights automatic, and then that is to turn your headlights off. Obviously, you have your HVAC vent there. And then coming down just a little bit more, you see this thing right here. This is basically to point the air from the HVAC system up, down, left, right, so on and so forth. You can see the vent moving down in there. But coming over to here, obviously, you do get a power adjustable steering column. So if you come over to here, obviously pushing up, that's up down and then it does telescope as well means coming towards you and you can push it away from you uh, and then also with those two memory seat adjustment settings it will memorize your side view mirrors as well as your steering wheel but let's take a listen to our turn signal here first so that is what your turn signal sounds like and um yeah, zoom in back out. This is what your steering wheel looks like. Obviously, this is a leather wrap steering wheel. And again, this one has been optioned with the $2,550 premium package, which gives you heated front seats as well as the heated steering wheel. And by the way, also with the premium package, you get the remote vehicle start. But it is a leather wrapped wheel and your horn is at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on the new 5 Series. You can hear the vehicle is very well insulated from the outside world, so you can't really hear the horn all that much. And then you also do get steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. If you press and hold on this paddle shifter here for 0.8 seconds, it's going to put you into boost mode, which is basically like Porsche's version of like the instant sports response button. So basically it gives you the full kill of what the vehicle is capable of power wise. So it's a pretty cool. I'll show you that on the driving portion of the video. But anyways, this is what the steering wheel looks like. If you want this fancy looking steering wheel, this does come a part of the $3,000 M Sport package. So this is the M Sport steering wheel. And in my opinion, I think it looks awesome and definitely looks better than the standard one that you get uh, otherwise. Now, 
On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, this vehicle has been optioned with the $650 adaptive cruise control with stop and go and the active driving assistant all under the $650 umbrella. So here are your adaptive cruise control settings. And then on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, these are your volume controls. You can see that button right there is basically to control what you got going on here on your digital gauge cluster, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, and then basically if I click this to the right, that is going to go forwards on a track. If I click this to the left, that is going to go back backwards on a track but then these this control or these controls as well as the scroll knob and that button are also to control your gauge cluster which I'll show you here in a minute and then if I press that audio looking button that is going to pop up the audio stuff here on the head-up display system same with the phone so if I press that phone button it's going to pop up the phone stuff on the infotainment system but for privacy reasons uh, I'm not going to show the phone list because it's got my last name on it but anyways you see that uh, little uh, microphone right there if I press and hold on the microphone it's gonna pop up Siri uh, but I don't need Siri right now otherwise it's basically like your voice assistant for the interior of the vehicle and then this is your windshield wiper control stock like I mentioned you do get rain sensing wipers and it will light up in green if the windshield wipers are on the automatic mode but coming up to here this is your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster right now it's letting me know that the headlights are in the automatic position i got my fuel gauge and my fuel range stuff down here as well as my time the um, speed limit sign which is not picking up on camera all that well it also lets me know who is buckled and who is not you get the ambient exterior temperature the coolant temperature gauge transmission status stuff tachometer speedometer digital speedometer readout and then you have this stuff here uh, at the center which is letting me know that the value since individual as well as the odometer and stuff like that if you wanted to see or change what you got going on on that screen you'd click this button right here and basically you can adjust the content so you can either see just your digital speedometer readout which is called reduced mode this is your trip data mode then you have your assisted view coming down one more you have your route preview stuff I want to show you assisted view because I kind of messed up there that's assisted view then uh, coming down one more you got your content which is your map which is showing your navigation stuff then you have your G meter give it a second then you also have your media slash radio stuff. And that's about it for the contents that you can see on the screen. Personally, this is probably the screen that I would use. But again, if you wanted to go into the next screen, you click this over to the right, and then that's gonna bring you in between your different layouts. You have this layout, then you have this layout, then you have this layout, and that is it. So it's, I would either use this one or this one, I think I actually like this one the best because you can see the tachometer. And then clicking over all the way to the right, you can see it says head up. So the head up display system comes a part of the $2,550 premium package so we can go throughout the head up display. So right now it's showing me the reduced view which is the digital speedometer readout as well as the speed limit sign. Then you can see the sport view which is basically kind of like a tachometer kind of screen. Then you have your assisted view which is the same thing that it was showing on this screen. Coming up one more, you can see your directional view, which is just showing you the compass. And then all the way up top is your standard view. Um, so I would probably maybe leave it in reduced view. Um, but yeah, actually, no, I'm gonna put it in sport view because I think that looks the coolest. But that's about it for the head-up display system and the digital gauge cluster. Moving over to our infotainment screen. This is the iDrive 8.5 or 8.5, I guess you would say. 14.9 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. So this is what the screen looks like in the home setting. So you can see basically like your uh, navigation stuff, your radio and media stuff. Then you can also swipe between that. It's gonna show you some different things. Things. Um, but yeah, this is basically like your home screen. Then you can go into your music stuff, your navigation stuff, your um, climate control stuff here. And then all of these shortcut buttons are doing what's on the screen. Obviously, you're bringing it back into your home screen. Then this is like uh, your phone stuff and your wireless Apple CarPlay stuff. And then basically, you see these climate controls. These is This stuff is always on the bottom of the screen, essentially. But I want to go into the secondary menu here. And basically, this is showing me all the different apps that this vehicle has. So I can scroll between all of these stuff. But if this is a little bit too intimidating for you because there's just too much stuff, you can also go in between your different infotainment apps, which kind of breaks up the screen a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to find stuff. Media stuff is basically what this button does. And then all the way at the bottom, this is like your vehicle stuff. Um, so you can go in between different devices, exterior lighting stuff, climate control stuff. So you can bring your climate control th throughout the entire screen. Or you can go in between uh, your different modes. You can go between my mobile devices, parking stuff, which is gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system. Again, this comes a part of the premium package. but. 
back and back out of that. Um, like as I was mentioning, this button right here is going to pop up your seat stuff here on the screen. Uh, you do not get massaging seats, but basically I could control this seat here. If I clicked on this seat and then I clicked right here, I can move the seat up, I can move the seat forwards, I can move the seat backwards. You know, you get the gist of what I'm talking about here. Uh, but back into that other screen, um, if this is even too intimidating for you, you can go into the browse menu at the top and let's say you wanted to go into, let's say exterior lighting. You can type in exterior lighting and boom, it's gonna pop up exterior lighting. So in, in, when in doubt, look for the magnifying glass. That makes things very easy because all you gotta do is type in like media and it's gonna pop up your media stuff, right? Uh, or I guess obviously that time it didn't work, but you can pop up like Apple CarPlay. But basically I get, you get the gist of what I'm talking about. You can search for what you're looking for. And then over here you got basically your time and your phone stuff. And then over here, you get some ambient lighting stuff. And again, these controls do the same thing. I already explained that. Then you get your max front defroster, your max rear defroster, and your hazard button located at the center. Don't you think that's pretty cool? Ambient lighting flashes with the hazard. I think that is really, really cool. But uh, closing that back off, again, these are to change the direction of the HVAC vents, which are about right there and back in there and then coming down just a little bit more as standard with this vehicle you do get a wireless charging pad so your wireless charging pad is right about here i believe on this side i have an iphone 14 pro max and it looks like my phone is just a little bit too big for the wireless charging pad but we're going to give it a go and i'm going to give it a second to kind of get acclimated wireless charging active so actually my phone does work and by the way when your phone is charging with the wireless charging pad not only is it going to let you know right here you can see you get that little lightning bolt letting me know that my phone is charging but then also you can go into your apple carplay stuff and it will let you know that your phone is charging there as well but coming back down here you get two uh, cup holders, you also get two USB-C ports down in there. This is all piano black trim. You get your push button, start button. This is your gear shifter. So obviously you just push forward to go into reverse, pull backwards to go into drive, and then push P to go into park. Uh, this is your auto hold button. By the way, park obviously uh, puts the emergency brake on as well. What kind of looks like an emergency brake thing. Uh, and then auto hold, basically, if you're tired of holding your foot down on the brake in traffic, if you press that auto H button, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. Then if you click on this button, uh, this is going to pop up your 360 degree view camera system here on the infotainment system. And then it's also going to pop up your sonar stuff here on the digital gauge cluster. Then this button right here is going to bring you in between your different driving settings. So you can see you go in between your different, uh, you know, driver assistance settings when it comes to the driving stuff, the parking stuff, safety and warnings. You can go in between that stuff or you can go into the drivetrain and chassis stuff. Um, so you can see all of these different things here. But uh, yeah, that is what that button does. And then you see this my modes button. This is basically going to bring a, uh, going to bring you in between your different drive modes. So you got your personal mode, you got your sport mode, you have your efficient mode. You also have expressive uh, as well as relax and digital art. By the way, look at the sky. It's absolutely gorgeous right now. Love that kind of stuff. That's the little things that I appreciate in life. Anyways, coming back down to here, um, yeah, that is what my modes does. It basically brings you into this screen and you can select which drive mode you want to be in. So let's say I wanted to go into sport mode. Now I'm in sport mode and you can see that kind of turned red. So did the ambient lighting, uh, but then that kind of stuff turned blue. I love the blue on the ambient lighting. By the way, I think I, I go over to the menu button and I type in ambient lighting. You can go into here, uh, yeah. I thought you could switch the colors of the ambient lighting, but I don't know. I'm not gonna mess with that. I don't wanna make this video too long. This is to volume up or volume down. And if you just click on it, it's gonna mute the audio system. Then you have to go forwards or backwards on a track. And then this, as well as these shortcut buttons are basically, this is gonna shortcut you into your media stuff shortcut you into your telephone stuff, shortcut you into your navigation stuff, and then it's gonna bring you into your home screen, obviously. Then you get a back button, and then this is to control what you see here on the screen. So I can control that kind of stuff. Um, basically, if I wanted to select something, all I would do is push down on that, and it would bring me into said screen. Um, basically, if I click down, it's gonna bring me into now this menu down here. I can go into my secondary screen and I can control what we see there. If I wanted to go into this screen, all I gotta do is bump this to the left and now I can control what's going on there. But anyways, that's about it for these controls. Coming over to here, 
you get a lockable lower glove box. I know uh, the camera is not picking it up uh, all that well, but all you gotta do is click on that. The glove box will open up. You get a decent amount of storage space there in that glove box. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera now, but anyways, it is a lockable lower glove box. Love the ambient lighting throughout the interior. Again, thigh extension over there. Auto dimming rear view mirror. You get your universal garage door opener at the bottom. If you own a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those garage bays individually. And then coming over to these controls, this is like your instant dome light on button for all the interior lights. Then that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. You have your sunroof control here. The sunroof does slide and tilt, but you can see the sunroof is closed. So basically if I push forward on that, that is going to close the shade, but I don't wanna close the shade right now uh, just because it's giving me a little bit of extra light. Driver light, passenger light, both are LED. And then if I click this button right here, that is going to bring me into my interior light settings. So you can go in between your ambient lighting uh, right here, basically turning it on or off. Obviously I want the ambient lighting um, on. Can I, lighting effects. I don't know how I would adjust the color. I guess I can't. But uh, anyways, then you got your SOS button up top there and that's kind of about it for the controls that we got there. However, if you can't see it, which I doubt you can, you can see there is an interior camera right there, which I'm not really a fan of, uh, just because I don't wanna be watched while I am driving. However, that interior camera also comes a part of the premium package. So uh, I think that's just kind of interesting. And then opening this up, you get a vanity mirror and a vanity light. Then you get a little spot right here. You could set money registration or any small little paper product. And then this visor, if you pull it out, let's see, is it gonna slide forwards and backwards? No, it's fixed in position. So the visor is fixed in position. And then up top here, you got your Opu panel and your Bluetooth mic pickup. Same stuff on that side. Visor is the same, Opu panel and your Bluetooth mic pickup. But uh, yeah, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the front. Other than if you pop this open, you get a little light down here. And then you also get a 12 volt power outlet down in there as well. I'm not sure if you're gonna pick it up, but you can see it's down in there. But uh, yeah, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. So with that in mind, uh, I did wanna go over a couple of things. So. A couple things that you get as standard with this vehicle, you get the Harman Kardon sound system. You also get the wireless charging pad, the panoramic roof, and a couple other things. Now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen and you can take a look at everything that this vehicle has option wise, but basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP, right? So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 BMW 530i xDrive is spec is $68,545. Definitely a lot of money, but you can see the vehicle is really nice, especially here at night with all the different ambient lighting. It feels very, very premium and luxurious, but I do wanna show you what we got going on here in these rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So let's see what the rear seats have to offer. And you can see you get that puddle light right there shining. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up on camera, but you can see that puddle light, very, very cool. And then this is what the door panel looks like back here. If I press on this button, let's see how far this rear window goes down. It goes all the way down, definitely nice. Uh, the windows are automatic up and down, but they can be finicky sometimes. Then you get your Harman Kardon speaker, um, some ambient lighting, a nicely padded armrest, some miscellaneous storage space. This is what the second row seats look like here in the back. Stepping on into what we got going on here. You get an Opu panel and a spot you can set your dry cleaning. I'm gonna need to grab my phone here so I can pick this stuff up on camera. This camera stinks in low light. But basically, Opu panel, a dry cleaning hook, and you get your Bluetooth mic pickup. You get a USB-C port behind the driver's seat as well as some ambient lighting. Then down here, you get your two HVAC vents. You get those two USB-C ports and a spot you could set your phone down in there if you wanted to as well. Same thing over here. You get the USB-C port, you get the ambient lighting, you get the Opu panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning and the Bluetooth mic pickup for the Bluetooth phone. I am five foot nine and I've got quite a bit of knee and leg room as you may be able to tell. Here's another view of my knee and leg room. I know it's probably not picking up on camera all that well, but quite a bit of room. And then when it comes to headroom, I've got a decent amount of headroom left over as well. I'd say I probably have probably an inch and a half to two inches of headroom left over. And then you also get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. The armrest is also nicely padded. But you know, 
we've talked about the exterior we've talked about the performance and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior so i want to see what this thing's like to drive as i'm assuming you guys do as well so i'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the video where i always start my videos here we go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and then i rate this on a scale of one to ten very well over that first one it's got great low end torque and now we're going to go over the second one five miles an hour about five right there this thing's going to get an 8.4 on a scale of one to ten it did very very well over those speed bumps and this thing is actually really quick surprisingly and i think a lot of that has to do quickness wise with the 48 volt mild hybrid system it makes a big difference uh, on the low end acceleration this is just a very comfortable cruiser and i'm very glad that i'm actually doing like a night drive because i've seen some people in my comments uh, ask about a night drive and what better vehicle to do a night drive in than one with some sweet ambient lighting in it right um so yeah we're gonna get into this lane here and i'm just gonna do a normal acceleration here once this light turns green but man this thing just rides very very well i just did a video with a 330i before doing a video with this and i was just amazed by the way that's like truck that i want to get right now is a f-150 xlt black appearance package here's a nice little acceleration very easy acceleration wise i was worried that guy was going to pull out in front of me but uh what i wanted to say was i did a video with a 330i before doing a video with this and what i said in that video was how remarkably quiet it was on the interior with the even the three series right so this is no different very very quiet here on the interior very well insulated from the outside world and that is just the premium touch that you get with a bmw and that is something that i definitely really really like uh, is just to feel the premiumness of a vehicle with the small stuff like the sound deadening like all the interior touch points like when i'm touching all of this stuff listen no creaking i mean there is a little bit of creaking but very very minimal creaking and that is what you get when you get a bmw or just for the most part premium products but you know sometimes other uh manufacturers they're not quite as tight with their interior trim and stuff like that so bmw definitely gets a pass because their stuff is very solid and that is just the what you get with the bmw build quality and stuff like that now before getting into BMW products, um, so 2023 was the last year of physical climate controls with the 5 Series. So now all your climate controls are throughout the screen. And while, yes, they are rather easy to do, all you got to do is click on that fan and then boom, your climate control stuff pops up on screen. I personally just really like physical climate controls, but they do make it easy. You know what I mean? Like you just pop this up and then boom, all your climate control stuff is there on screen. But when you're driving, it's kind of difficult to like navigate throughout the screen rather than if you just had a physical control you just either tap it or you turn it you know what i mean but I'm, I'm assuming just like your physical controls like you know them like the back of your hand once you have the vehicle for a little bit of time i feel like that's the same thing with the uh, climate controls throughout the screen because all you have to do is boom and you know exactly where all the climate controls are but me you know not having so much time behind the wheel of this thing uh it does take me a little bit of time to find my different controls especially while driving when stationary it's a different story but while driving it's just a little bit different uh, but here's a little acceleration nothing crazy very well insulated from the outside world take a listen to what it's going to sound like going over these bridge joints at about 55 miles an hour as well as the road noise and the wind noise very very quiet i feel like i can talk to you very low and uh, you'll still be able to hear what i'm talking about so that is just something that you get with the 5 series and honestly even the 3 series which i was very impressed with the sound deadening on the 3 series you know that's just stuff that i personally appreciate when it comes to the brakes this thing's got very solid brakes i heard something hauling and i was wondering what it was it was that chal or charger uh sounds pretty good 
but I definitely, definitely, definitely like the M Sport package. Reason being, it makes this thing look so much better uh, than just the standard 530. It just gives it a very sporty appearance, more aggressive looks front and rear, and then also here with the steering wheel. I love the M Sport steering wheel. I think it looks great. There's the uh, old, there's an old 7 Series right there. Here's another acceleration. Just a very like comfortable acceleration, you know what I mean? It's got more than enough get up to get on it when you wanna get on it, but then just around town, it's not dramatic. It's just effortless power, really. And then also getting into seat comfort, these seats are very, very comfortable. You know, honestly, this is kind of the perfect test of the 5 Series right now because we're literally in, you know, traffic. It's 5.03 right now. And most of you are gonna be using this as a daily driver. So this is like the literally, the perfect real world test. You know, we're just driving home, going the speed limit. The seats are super comfortable. The ride suspension wise is so comfortable. Uh, soaks up bumps very well. It's so well insulated from the outside world. But if you wanted to listen to a little bit of music, the Harman Kardon sound system sounds awesome. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put us into sport mode here and then I'm just gonna get on it. Ready? Floored. And then you can see it's downshifting. So acceleration wise, it's great. However, for me, if this was my car, I'd leave it in personal mode. You know what I mean? This isn't a rocket ship. This isn't an M5. This isn't an M550. I believe the new uh, i5 is like the M60. Um, so just leave it in personal personal mode because it just it's very very comfortable in personal mode. And that's kind of the point of the 530. You know, the point of the 530 isn't to have you know crazy power. The point of the 530 is to have enough power to have you comfortably accelerate uh, and then also just have a little bit of extra passing power. Here's another probably let's do 70% acceleration. I'm telling you, the low end power is where you feel the power on this thing. When you get to the top end, it's not quite as zippy, but definitely down low, it is nice and zippy. So overall, to summarize this thing, I lo look at the sky. You see the cloud barrier right there? That is so cool. I wish I was a meteorologist that could tell you what's going on there. But anyways, that looks awesome. Looks like there's a front moving in or something. I don't know. Uh, but. To summarize this vehicle, very, very comfortable. Sound system is great. Seats are ultra, ultra comfortable, and it's just a very luxurious feeling vehicle overall. But I do wanna know your opinions on the interior and the exterior in the comments down below. What do you prefer, the new 5 Series or the old 5 Series? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you did enjoy the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to give the video a thumbs up, to leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. Like I said earlier, the likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. So I'd appreciate it if you do those three things. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.